Welcome! In this video, we're going to take a look at Google Photos and how it can be used in the classroom. Hi everybody, I'm Ryan Horn. I am the Instructional Technology Coach here in Howell Schools. You can follow my blog at ryanstechtips.com. You can also follow me at Twitter at ryanhorn0076. So let's get started. Google Photos. Number one, why should we even use Google Photos in the first place? So I love Google Photos for a lot of reasons, but there's free cloud storage for all of the photos that you have. That means you can access your photos on any device where there's an internet connection. Your photos are no longer tied to your phone, so when you lose your phone or you upgrade your phone, you don't have to worry about losing a whole bunch of photos or trying to upload them to the new phone. Also, have you ever had pictures on your phone and you're trying to show a picture to someone from last month or last week or maybe last year and you're scrolling through your phone forever and you can never find it. Google Photos has an incredible search feature where you can search by person, location, even things. We'll get into that in a minute. And also Google Photos is great because you can create and share albums. And when you share a photo album with someone, you can give them rights just to view it. Or you can invite that person or people to add their own photos as well. So how do we get started with Google Photos? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to use an iPad for an example, and then we'll switch over to see what it looks like on an iPhone. Okay, so I wanted to show you uh, Google Photos on uh, my iPad first, so you can see what it looks like when you first install Google Photos and get started. So I've already gone to the App Store. I've installed the Google Photos app. I'm not going to walk you through that process. I'm confident you can get there. Um, I'm going to open up Google Photos for the first time. So. Here comes Google Photos app. And you'll notice there's a get, uh, get Started button on the bottom. And let's go ahead and get started and take a look at how Google Photos works. Step one, uh, you're going to need to give uh, access to Google Photos. So it can actually, sorry about that, get your photos from your device. So I'm going to say OK. Um, I'm going to not allow those notifications right now. So I'm going to leave those off. This is the first screen you'll see when this is the first time you go to Google Photos. So your first choice is back up your photos and videos. And you're going to want to turn that on and leave it on. It's automatically going to sync your photos up to Google Photos, up to the cloud off of your device. And I'm going to press continue down in the bottom. The next step, it's asking you to choose uh, an upload size for your photos and videos. So 99% of you are going to leave it on high quality and not on original. High quality gives you unlimited storage in your Google Photos, so you don't have to worry about ever running out of space. Um, in high quality, Google does uh, compress the photos, but I have seen many sites where professional photographers um, can't distinguish the difference between the compressed photos and the uncompressed. If your photo is larger than 16 megapixels, it's going to be resized to 16 megapixels. Um, your, my iPhone, I have a, the newest iPhone 7 Plus, it doesn't take photos that are larger than 16 megapixels, so I, I'm not even going to worry about that. Um, if you're someone that records videos, high quality uh, caps the videos to set 1080p, so if you have um, like a 4K video, it's going to bump it down to 1080p. You can switch to original, but what happens if you do that? It counts against your 15 gigabytes of free space in Google Drive. So if you run out of space, you have to pay for more. Um, it allows the original size of any picture or video. I'm going to go to high quality. Press continue. So this is just showing you how to see photos in your photo library that you can pinch to zoom in and zoom out. And then also you can, when you have photos in there, you can click and drag your finger across photos to select more than one. So here we are in Google Photos. I'm going to exit out of iPad mode. I'm going to switch over to my phone and I'm going to show you some of the features of Google Photos. So here we are on my iPhone. I just wanted to switch a device to show you guys multiple looks at Google Photos on a tablet, now on a phone. And Last, we're going to take a look at how Google Photo looks uh, on a PC. So in the phone, I wanted to show you guys a couple features. If you go to the three vertical, excuse me, the three horizontal bars in the top left, 
that's going to take you to your settings. And in the settings, you can click on the settings. It will take you to the same settings that we used when we first set up Google Photos. So here's backup and sync. If you needed to change the upload size of your photos, you can do so here. Also, you have some options on the bottom to use cellular data to back up photos or videos. You might want to have it turned off if you are um, worried about data usage with your plan. Um, if you're not worried about data usage with your plan, you can turn that on. Um, if it's off, it's going to wait. Google Photos is going to wait to be on Wi-Fi, connected to Wi-Fi before it uploads photos from your phone. So again, you can come to the settings at any time. I wanted to also show you guys something called the Assistant. And the Assistant is down here on the bottom. And the Assistant, when you click on it, um, Google Photos, its Assistant mode will kind of create some photo collages for you, maybe an animation. Um, also in the assistant, this is where you can see if it's going to be backing up any photos, or if it's backing up photos currently, or if it's already done. And you can also see this is where you can go to create new albums, photo books, collages, animations, and movies. That's in the assistant. Now when you're in photos, these three dots over here on the right also lets you create new animations, albums, and all of that. One more, this is the albums button. And the Albums button will show you all of your current albums, and then you can click on those albums, open it up, so on and so forth. So, the next thing I want to do is show you guys how to create albums, and more importantly, why or how can we use Google Photos in the classroom? So we've taken a look at why Google Photos is a good thing. We've also taken a look at how to get started with Google Photos on a tablet and a phone. Now to the good part of the video. How can we use Google Photos in our classroom? These are some examples that I thought of, and there are a ton more, but these are just a few uh, that we can talk about. You, all, you go on field trips with your class. You've got all your photos on your phone. How do you get those photos to uh, the students' families? Well, throw them in an album. Share that album out with your families. How do you share the album? You can um, share directly if you have email addresses. You can copy and paste a link to that album. You can post a link to that album on your website or blog. There's all kinds of ways to do that. How about class projects? Let's take a look at this example. Now I'm going to show you Google Photos on your desktop. You haven't seen it there yet. You've seen it on a phone and a tablet. Here's on a PC. In Google Drive, I'm going to use the Google Apps button. We're going to go to Photos. So here's how it looks on a computer. I wanted to show you guys an example of um, a photo album I made for a class project. So lots of times in our classrooms, we have our students that make things or present things, and not all the parents are able to attend, and they want to see how that uh, project went. And also, as a teacher, I want to archive that so I can come back to it and share that with students um, down the road. So here's a Colonial Museum project. And this is what students made. And I've created an album for it. And what I can do is I can share this album out and send it to my family, send it to my students so they can take a look at it at home. So that's one example of class project. How many of you have your students present something um, maybe verbally Orally, they're having a presentation. You can record that presentation. You could stick videos in a Google Classroom, excuse me, into a Google Photos album, and then you can share that album out. What do you mean scavenger hunts? What do you think in there? So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, I created this rectangle scavenger hunt. I'm going to delete that album and show you how I made it and why. So I'm going to create a new album. What I've done is we were learning about rectangles in the classroom and talking about how rectangles are everywhere in life. You just have to look for them, trying to identify those shapes. So I went out with my phone and took various pictures of inside and outside the school with rectangles. And again, I went to New Album. I'm going to create an album, and I'm going to select the photos that I want to add to this album, all these photos that contain rectangles. So now I'm going to press Create. I'm going to call this a Rectangle Scavenger Hunt. And on the top left corner, I'm going to press Done. Now, I have this. I'm thinking I could share this out with my students, not for them to just look and find the rectangles, but how cool would it be to give my students a device 
have them go on a search at school, take a device when they're at home, take pictures of rectangles they find in their world, and add them to the album. So when you go to share an album, you can type in emails, you can select emails, send it to your students, and then you can give them different rights. So I'm going to give this one, let's say if Catherine's one of my students. Before I send it, I can choose if only, if I'm the only one that can add photos, or if I want to do unlocked version, let them collaborate and add photos, and then when I send it, they can add their own photos. So that's an interactive way that I would um, use Google Photos with my students where they can actually contribute to an album. And you can do the same thing with uh, like a field trip or if you have parent helpers, you can open up the access to them so that they can add your album too. You don't have to do all the work trying to crowdsource those photos. So let's go back to our, our list of uses for Google Photos. And I know this video has um, been going on for a few minutes, but hang around because there's some good stuff here. Classroom culture, let's, let's talk about that. So for those of you maybe at the elementary level, you have your students come in as student of the week or student of the month, or maybe it's someone's special day to share something about their life to the class. Well, what happens after that student shares with their classmates? Maybe we hang up their, their pictures of their family uh, on the wall or in the hallway for that week or a couple days and we take it down and a new one comes up. How cool would it be to create a shared album and in that album, we have those pictures of everyone in the class throughout the year. We add to it throughout the year, and it opens it up so that the students in the class can, and the families too, can go and look in that at any time they want. We don't take them back down off the wall. They're, they're in there for the entire year, and students get to know each other. Maybe, um, maybe Sarah played in a soccer tournament last weekend, and they're going to add pictures to that album. And so we get to know each other outside of school. And that really helps build that culture. And especially the teacher. The teacher can post pictures of what's going on in their life. Instead of the teacher just telling the students, hey, we went camping with my family. You've got to hear this hilarious story because I fell into the lake when I was trying to get out of the canoe. If you have pictures of that, post them in there for your students to see. It really will help you connect. How about the whiteboard? So what are we talking about with that? Well, let's go back to Google Photos, and I want to show you how powerful the search feature is. So in Google Photos, if you are looking for something, a photo from last week or, or last month or last year, you can click the search box, and it's an amazing search tool. You can see some faces are popping up with the facial recognition. You can click on that and narrow it down by photos of only that person. How cool is that? Or you can type things up here. Maybe I want to search for sunsets. It's going to give me all of my sunset pictures. Isn't that awesome? But what you can also do, type another thing. I'm going to search for whiteboards. Because I have some pictures of whiteboards that I've taken. Maybe I have um, taken a picture of my whiteboard showing my math and I want to share this with my students because it's been erased. It's not there anymore. And I want my students to access it at home. So I can create an album of, here's a album that I created, examples from math. And over time, I'm going to post different math pictures here, and I'm going to send these out to class. Okay? So that's an example of, of how to use uh, whiteboards, or whiteboard pictures, I should say, in Google Photos. I wanted to take a minute and go back to the search feature in Google Photos because I love it, and you're going to love it too. So as a teacher, imagine if a parent contacts you and says, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what happened, but my camera died. I came in to help in your classroom, and all the pictures I took are gone. Can you please send me pictures of, of my child? And so, you know, if you're in your photos and you're scrolling through the list trying to look for pictures of that one student, that's going to take forever. But if you use the search feature, click in the search box, it's going to recognize students in your class. And what if you say, oh, here's Reese, and you click on Reese. Now you can simply select these photos and share them with that parent. You can go by student because of the face recognition. It's awesome. And also with the search feature, you can search by location too. So when you click search, I'm going to type in a location. 
and press enter and it's going to give me photos for that were taken in that location from the geotag on my phone. That's awesome. I love the search feature in Google Photos. I want to go over one more feature, just one more of Google Photos. We can go on forever, but just one more and then we'll call it a day. So I want to talk about this, inserting a Google Photo into a Google Doc, why you would do it, and how it works. So let's do this. Let's take a look at a, a one I've already created. So how many of you have been in a meeting, there's been a whiteboard or a presentation, you took a picture, someone took a picture on their phone, and then the discussion's over. You don't talk about it anymore. The meeting uh, time ran out, and that was the end of it. But what if you inserted that picture into a Google Doc and added a comment, and then people, your teachers or administrators or whatever, uh, the staff in your school, can continue the conversation on the comment by commenting back and forth on this. Now, this could work in your classroom, too. If you posted a picture and you want your students to comment on it and get them to use their student talk that way. Well, how does that work? Well, I'm going to open up a new Google Doc and we'll take a look at how to insert a Google photo into a Google Doc. It's really easy. Step one, I'm going to go to Insert and Image. Now, instead of uploading an image, I'm going to go and click on your albums and this will pull up my Google Photo album. I could click on the albums to take a look, or I can use the search field here, just like Google Photos. Uh, recently, a class at one of our schools did a PBL, a project-based learning unit, and they actually created a student-run garden at the school. The garden's awesome. It's, it's a huge project. It, it's now done, but I wanted the students to talk about it some more. So the search box, I'm going to type in garden, and then search. Here are the pictures of the garden, and I want to insert this picture because was a timeline about building the garden here this is a actual timeline about the garden and I want to continue the conversation on this so as the teacher I can click on this image and I'm going to click comment and I can ask the students um, what's next in the timeline what's next in the timeline now that the garden is complete Okay, oops, sorry about that. So once I comment on this, the students can reply. I can share this with the whole class. I can share it with other students. Students can do this as well with, with their Google Photos. So this is another way for you to collaborate as a staff and comment or as a teacher with your students to get those comments going on um, Google Photos, okay? We have covered a lot on Google Photos. I'm going to call it a day there. I, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, reach out to me. You can find me at uh, ryanstechtips.com for my blog. And you can also follow me at Twitter at ryanhorn0076. All right, everybody. Have a good day.